I want to tell you about some of my favorite new features in Logic Pro 11. One of them no one's talking about, not even Apple. And I think it's a game changer for audio nerds like myself. If you're an audio nerd, hit that like button. Well, here we are in Logic Pro 11, and it should look fairly familiar. Nothing really has changed about the GUI from Logic 10. I've pulled in a song from some good friends of mine, City Creed. I think they're wonderful. This track is one of their newest singles. It's called At Your Will, and I had the pleasure of mastering it. Let's have a quick listen to a snippet here. I pretend to keep my feelings to myself I surrender at your will But I'm about to let go Learn not to show the things that hide deep in my soul Cause I'm not living here for long So please don't ask me to stay hey. Cool. Great song. So let's talk about the first feature that I love that I can see myself using all the time. And that's stem split. All you have to do here is control click and the second option here is stem splitter and it does that it thinks for a second it'll ask you what do you want to split out select everything hit split and -da 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 -da. that's going to go faster because i already did it once and we're actually just going to delete this we don't need it here is the stem split that i did earlier and just have a listen to the vocal on its own. I'll pretend to keep my feelings to myself. I surrender at your will, but I'm about to let go. You're not to show the things that hide deep in my soul. That's actually really awesome. That sounds super good. The drums. Throw on some bass. That's solid quality. So the stem splitter, I can see from, from a mastering perspective, if I really wanna do something just to the vocal, I can actually pull that vocal out, process it on its own, and then just master the whole song from the stems. So the next awesome thing that's new in Logic Pro 11 is the bass and keyboard AI assistant players. What do they call these guys? They call these guys session players, bass and keyboard. So, just like we already have a drummer, the drummer here, you can choose the style, complexity, intensity, what parts of the kit you want to use. There's a lot of details you can get. You know what this is. The bass player, similarly here, now we have pop songwriter, rock, alternative, R&B, complexity, intensity. So it's basically the same thing as the drummer, except now you have a bass player and a keyboard player. And they actually sound really convincing. That feature goes hand in hand with the global chord track and region chords. So what I've done here, this is really terrible. And I apologize in advance, City Creed, because your song is way better than this. But I threw in a couple chords that work over the vocals. So if I unmute the vocal from the stem split and I bring in my own arrangement, this is the kind of thing you can do with these assistants. I So that's kind of awesome, except the real song sounds way better. If you want to learn more about these features, I'm dropping a link down below. This goes through all the new things that are in Logic Pro 11. I'm also going to drop a link to my mastering services. I'm a mastering engineer. I'd love to help you get your record across the finish line. My name's Will. Hit me up. Anyway, let's get into the super nerdy stuff. There's a new plugin here. It's called Chroma Glow. Chroma Glow is essentially saturation on steroids. You have these wonderful tube and tape and preamp models that Apple has done a, actually a very good job putting together. And I wanted to sort of pop the hood on this a little bit and have a look and see, compare it to the analog gear that I have behind me. Can I find some comparable settings? Basically what I want to do here for you today is I want to get the chroma glow to look as close as I can to my EAR, EQ, and my manly slam, which combined is $25,000 worth of mastering tube equipment versus chroma glow built in to Logic Pro. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up a simple test. We have test oscillator, which is here. That's annoying. Volume down. 
So this test oscillator is feeding into Chroma Glow. Chroma Glow is feeding into a Fab Filter Pro Q3. So you can see with the uh, Chroma Glow off, you just have a sine wave at 1K that is super duper clean. And when you turn it on, here it is. It's loud, it's beautiful. And when you drive it, it gets icky and wonderful. Like, I mean, all music is distortion. All instruments are distorted. If an instrument is not just a pure sine wave, that means it has harmonics and harmonic distortion is a pleasing thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's the reason why a Stradivarius violin is more expensive than a Walmart violin because it has better distortion than the Walmart violin appealing distortion. So part of our job as audio engineers is to kind of tread that line between like what's good distortion and what's bad distortion. So I'm not going to say 100% is bad distortion. I'm just going to say it is a lot of distortion. So we have this going on one channel. I'm going to close a couple windows here and I'm going to open up on another channel. Here is another test oscillator probably also loud and we don't want that. So this second test oscillator is going through Logic's IO plugin, outputting and inputting from my analog equipment. And currently we have the slam going into the EAR. And if we open up this second Pro Q3, you'll be able to see so on the left, this is Chroma Glow. On the right, this is analog equipment. Now they look similar, but I think we can get closer. Notice the analog equipment, that odd harmonic is a little bit louder. And we've got this cool noise floor here, which is characteristic of analog equipment. I do not see a noise floor on Chroma Glow and the harmonics are a little bit quieter. So let's go to Chroma Glow. And if I pull this drive up a bit, I can see now it's 9% is too much. That was very quick. So I'm just gonna try and match this third harmonic to this third harmonic because that's the loudest, most apparent one. And 6% drive modern tube looks pretty darn close. That versus that. We're quite in the ballpark. And then a little pro tip hack thing that you can steal is let's use the dither in FabFilter Pro L2. You really can use any dither you want. I'm just using this because it's available. Dither 18 bits. Now look, this is our Chroma Glow. This now has a noise floor that looks very, very similar to the noise floor of my analog equipment. Huh. So you can use dither for things other than dithering? Yes. This, I'm liking this. I'm gonna say, that this Chroma Glow setting here with the L2 for dither for a fake noise floor looks eerily similar, strikingly similar to $25,000 worth of analog equipment. Did I just save you $25,000? Maybe. It looks right on meters. So let's move on. Chroma Glow is sweet. And what I'm gonna do here in the next part of this video going into the last part of this video. Here's the thing I feel like no one's actually talking about. If we go to this page where Apple is talking about what's new in Logic Pro, here's all these awesome things, awesome things, awesome things, awesome things, more, 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 more. And then like the other features, like we don't really care about these. So third from the bottom right here, real time bounce for external instruments. This is what gets me excited. This is gonna be cool. What does it mean? You can create analog loops. If you're a mixing engineer, multiple loops on different channels to different analog equipment. Uh, for a mastering engineer, really it's out and in from one channel, but have a look at this, have a look at this. Okay, we are going to take Chroma Glow, which we just determined at 6%, sounds exactly like the slam and the EAR. So now I'm going to bypass the slam and the EAR because we don't need those anymore. Here's Chrome Glow. But I'm still going to have this analog in and out going from 1516 back into 1516 because that's the channel I use for analog mastering. I don't know why. It's, just, it's available. 
Oh, I do know why. Because 1 through 12 are taken up by Atmos Array. So the very simple mastering chain that I'm going to put together for At Your Will is Chromaglow doing the slam and ear thing. So I'm bypassing the slam and ear. I'm going to still go out and in with the analog. I'm going to use analog gain instead of digital gain because I feel like that'll just make it more vibrant. And also the, the DMC has like a really nice 120 volt thing that imparts a lot of nicety. So we're going to use analog for loudness and then we're going to come back in with an L2 for the last 2 dB of limiting. So super duper simple chain here. You can see it's three plugins, an analog loop and an L2. Let me just set the loudness real quick here and then I will show you analog bounce in place. I'll pretend to keep my feelings to myself. I surrender at your will, but I'm about to let go. Learn not to show the things that hide deep in my soul. Cause I'm not living here for long, so please don't ask me to stay. Hey, I'll pretend to keep my feelings to myself. I surrender at your will, but I'm about to let go. Learn not to show the things that hide. That's just about 6 dB of loudness is pretty much perfect. So check this out. This is the coolest thing. All we got to do here is, again, control click, bounce in place. Let's name it at your will, mastered. And we go bounce. And it's going to record this in real time through the analog equipment through the Chroma Glow, through the L2, and it's going to spit out a new file that is all three of those things in the right order printed. The master file. It worked. Look at this. Sweet. Okay, so it automatically muted the version that has the plugins on it, including the analog loop. And here is our mastered file. Just like that, printed right into the project that we were working in. Now, I'd like to do a shootout video of Logic Pro 11 on the desktop versus Logic Pro 2 on the iPad. Put them head to head and see who can make a better master. If you're into that, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Also, check out my iPad Pro video where I master a song from start to finish in Logic Pro 2 with stock plugins only. Okay, team, those are my favorite things. I love you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.